Welcome to Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's, the investigative journalism program where I ask the question, Whatever Happened to the Pizza at McDonald's? I'm your host, Brian Thompson. I now turn to my colleague, David Ono, with ABC7 Eyewitness News in Los Angeles. The U.S. Labor Department says a McDonald's restaurant in Louisville, Kentucky, employed two 10-year-old children who sometimes worked until 2 a.m. and they didn't get paid. It's part of a widespread investigation into child labor law violations in the southeast. The agency also found the owners of more than 60 McDonald's in several states employed about 300 children to work more than the legally permitted hours. McDonald's called the report deeply troubling. The company says it's committed to ensuring franchises comply with all labor laws. Now back to me. Though I am but a journalist, and therefore do very little labor, I know enough about labor laws to understand these kinds of violations are quite serious and are often accompanied by very high fines, which provoked in me the need to ask one of journalism's five W's, specifically the W known as why. Why would a McDonald's franchise owner put their business at such risk. After all, it is very easy to tell when a business is using child labor. Most children do not have driver's licenses allowing for easy verification of their dates of birth, but their unique physical characteristics often give away their ages. In fact, it is almost impossible to mistake a child for an adult at a single glance unless one is looking at two children stacked on top of each other and wrapped in a trench coat. Risks aside, there are perhaps some benefits in using child labor, specifically within the context of the fast food industry. Children do not negotiate high salaries, since they often have very few rent or mortgage expenses. With their small bodies and pliant, unhardened skeletons, they can rather easily fit into tight, difficult-to-clean areas like the greasy crack beneath a fryolator. And rather than using expensive market research companies, franchise owners can simply ask their underage employees to test how easy it is to choke on any given Happy Meal toy. But I believe there is one reason above all others that a McDonald's franchise owner would endanger their livelihood by illegally hiring children. And that is because children are too young to remember when McDonald's served pizza. In the course of my investigative journaling, I have occasionally had occasion to ask the occasional adult McDonald's employee the following question. Do you remember when McDonald's served pizza? Often the answer is no. This is because many employees lie to me, due to either outside pressure or their own evil natures. But though they have perhaps not thought about it in quite some time, many employees report that they do, in fact, remember McDonald's pizza. This is seen as a potential security threat by McDonald's corporate, as these memory-jogged employees may potentially use their security access to snoop around their stores for any remaining sign of pizza. Hypothetically, a curious worker could uncover a dusty recipe book, hidden behind one of the many pallets of rat poison typically filling a McDonald's stockroom. Or, even more dangerous, they may find a pizza oven discarded by the dumpsters out back, perhaps buried beneath some garbage bags full of rat cadavers. In what the powers that be would consider a worst-case scenario, this worker could use this recipe book and this oven to begin baking and serving McDonald's pizzas once again, thus sparking a chain reaction of consumer demand that would force pizza's return to the standard menu and lay waste to whatever nefarious scheme hinges on its indefinite discontinuation. Of course, this potential disaster is averted if no one who works at McDonald's is old enough to remember McDonald's pizza at all. Over the years, I have attempted numerous educational initiatives aimed at teaching the youth of the world the good news about McDonald's pizza, with the goal of inspiring Gen Z and Gen whatever letter comes after Z to work toward a brighter future. These initiatives have included publishing McDonald's pizza material in Hot Topic stores, 
lecturing about McDonald's pizza near the shallow ends of public swimming pools, and sewing information about McDonald's pizza into the lining of Oshkosh Bagash overalls. None of these initiatives have even made it past the planning stages, since America's powerful education cartels keep very strict control over what children are and are not allowed to learn. But if I could somehow indoctrinate the youth with this knowledge, there would be no benefit to employing children at McDonald's. Some might even argue that teaching kids about McDonald's pizza is the only real way to make sure franchise owners never again exploit child labor. With that in mind, I believe I am morally obligated to continue my efforts. And I think I may have discovered a foolproof method. The earliest a person could possibly be considered a child is while said person is living inside a human womb. As such, I believe this is the perfect stage of development at which to impart valuable McDonald's pizza information. But what would be the most efficient way to impart such information to the womb dweller? The obvious answer is to give the unborn child a book about McDonald's pizza, either via surgical implantation or shoving it up one or another of the pregnant person's many bodily tubes. But it is simply too dark in the womb to read without damaging one's eyesight. No, the best method for educating such a creature would be via auditory means. Thankfully, I have produced many hours of an investigative journalism program full of more information about McDonald's pizza than any other investigative journalism program ever produced, a fact which the folks at the Guinness Book are sure to one day recognize. One problem. The womb dweller's ears are rather insulated by layers of the pregnant person's skin, tummy juices, etc., but I believe this impediment could easily be overcome by using an audio listening device with a large enough speaker to deliver powerful sound while also being portable enough to hold directly against a pregnant belly. In other words, a boom box. Though such devices have fallen out of public favor over the years and have largely been replaced by information pods, telephones, etc., a quick search on the internet website of major electronics retailer Best Buy turned up a new model of Sony brand boombox with very encouraging user reviews, including this one from user J. Leo, who writes, and I quote, quote, it is what it is, unquote. But before I encourage any pregnant people to hold these boomboxes to their tummies and play my program for the life forms living inside them, I must make sure this activity is as healthy and harmless as it can possibly be. Welcome to Sony Electronic Support. Hi, this is Yasmin. How can I help you? Uh, hello, my name is Brian Thompson, and I have a safety question about one of your Sony boom boxes. I'll do my best to assist you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Go ahead. Tell me, what can I do? Well, I am thinking of asking people to purchase one of your Sony boom boxes. And specifically, I would like them to use it in such a way that they hold it to pregnant people's bellies and play podcasts, um, specifically one podcast called Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's. And I was just wondering if there are any health concerns or safety risks associated with holding a boombox to the belly of a pregnant person and playing a podcast for potentially quite a few hours at a time? Mm, that is a good question. Thank Mr. you. Thompson. I'm going to do my best to help you on this matter. Um, before you proceed, let me ask you, is this the first time that you're contacting Sony support? Um, do you have an existing account with Sony? I have been using Sony products for quite a few years, and I cannot say for certain that I have not contacted Sony before. I tend to have quite a few problems and questions about just about every product I ever use, so chances are very good I have called before, but I do not have an account number on hand or even in mind. 
Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. You're welcome. Okay, just for references, uh, can I have the phone number? This is just in case our call gets disconnected so we can contact you. Okay. Oh. oh, certainly. My telephone number is 3... Thank you. Um, do you have an email that you can share with Sony in case we need to send information related to our products? Uh, yes, I do. Microphone. Yes, I do have one. Can I have it? Oh, certainly. It is Brian. at gmail.com. And that stands for Google Mail. Dot com. com probably stands for something. I do not know what it is. Thank you. So it spells B R A I or Y. You say I Y or just. Uh, that is Brian with one I. Oh. Okay. Got it. Thank you. And okay, you do you want to receive notifications about? Exclusive offers, updates, um, Sony products. Mm, well, between you and me, how good are these offers? Okay. Okay, I'll send something. Now, oh, okay. um, about the safety question that you have, uh, do you have, I mean, are you talking about a, a specific model, a boombox, or just in general? Well, I, I did have a specific model in mind. I was doing some online shopping and I saw that there was one very highly reviewed model. Um, I can give you the model number if you would like. Okay. What is the model number? It is model number ZSR S6. I don't know if this is a zero or the letter O and then BT. So Z is in Zebulon, S is in Sebulon, R is in Rebulon, S is in Sebulon. Six, either a zero or an O is in Oriulon. And then BT is in Brian Thompson. Okay, I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, um, let me do some researches about this product. And I'll be able to answer the inquiry that you have. May I place you on hold for one or two minutes, Mr. Mm -hmm. Thompson? One or two is fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Be right back. Thompson, thank you for waiting. I'm You're sorry welcome. for the long delay, uh, but I'm still um, verifying the specifications, all the information that I have about these boombox. So is it okay if you allow me one or two more minutes? Oh, certainly. Um, by the way, I, the song that I was just listening to, the Muzak, sounded very familiar. Do you know if that was a song by the band Leinard Skynard? <laughs> No. Mm -hmm. Is it like a classic music with violin or, or what is it? No. Oh, well, I guess we you could sort of I'm classify sorry. it as, as classic rock and roll. But if, if you don't know, that's fine. It just sounded like Leinart's kind uh, of. Yeah. Kind of... Sorry, it's just that I do not have the title, but if I can find something related to it. That I can share it with you, definitely. Oh, okay. oh that's okay. Well, if you have the information available, that would be appreciated. But if not, that's also fine. But uh, apology accepted for your ignorance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Hi, Mrs. Samson. Hello. Thank you for waiting. You're welcome. Uh, I'm here. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to answer the two questions. The, the one that I want to share first is about the music. Uh, that music uh, was actually, uh, um, it is owned by Sony. It was um, made from one of our specialists in music, you know, Sony Music, the industry. Okay. And that is like, I do not, we don't have that uh, too much details, but maybe you can find something in um, YouTube if you go to Sony.com or if you just uh, type a uh, Sony Music, for example. Okay. Uh, okay. You can find something. Okay? okay, that is very helpful. I will just and Google the whether Leonard Skinner is a Sony recording artist. Yeah. Uh, it's the first thing that someone asked me about that. I didn't actually know that it was some kind of music. I thought that it was some recording artist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it does sound like, as, as yeah. I said, class, classic rock and roll. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, related to the safety question that you have, I was reading the like the warning, uh, the safety instructions that we have. It doesn't mention anything about uh, you know carrying the boombox um uh, in the belly. Mm -hmm. But it is always. I mean, you know, uh, you know, these all devices they produce some kind of radiation, I would say, that is not too healthy to expose, a, you know, a baby, I can say baby, in okay. the belly. And of course, this has uh, an impact. Maybe you will not notice it uh, right away. It's something that is noticeable in years, with years, uh, you know, cancer, and all that. So, so if they hold the boombox to the pregnant belly, it may cause cancer in the baby. So they should maybe hold the boombox out at arm's length. Is what you're saying? Exactly. Um, okay. okay. I'm not an expert in this matter because we are just uh, we have some restricted uh, limitations in knowledge about this safety risk. Not only in boombox. I'm a uh, this is in general, okay? Computers, smartphones, sure. everything. Of uh, course, all of know? these things could potentially cause cancer, but I do not expect you to know the mm -hmm. uh, metaphorical ins and outs of, of that situation. Yes. So, uh, probably maybe you can exhaust it, uh, we'll say, not for too long, maybe just a few minutes, uh, but okay. not just like uh, uh, carrying the boombox. Uh, so short bursts, you you're know, saying, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. just one or two episodes exactly. at a time. I do release short episodes as a courtesy to my listeners, so that seems doable. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this has been very exactly. helpful information. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, Mrs. Thompson. And in case you need, um, if you need for the assistance or if you need help, you can also find or support a website, sunny.com. Can go there, and also we are willing to help you at any time you want. You can you can feel free to contact us back. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, perhaps I will. This has been a very pleasant conversation. Uh, my pleasure, Mr. Samson. Any other inquiry that you might have? Mm. No, I do not think so. Uh, okay, wonderful, Mrs. Thompson. I'm very glad we were able to help you today. Me too. Hope you enjoy your day. Thank you for contacting Sunny Support, and take care. Uh, you're welcome. You take care as well, and thank you for your candor. Thank you. Bye-bye, Mrs. Thompson. Goodbye. Thompson. Goodbye. Do you know what happened to pizza at McDonald's? Do you remember it? Please send all correspondence to pizza at McDonald's at gmail.com. To support the show, please join my Patreon at patreon.com slash pizza at McD's for exclusive benefits. And for more information, including links to social media, merchandise opportunities, etc., visit pizza at McDonald's.com. Thank you to my invaluable Patreon producers.
Dan Dreyer, David Friedman, Grant Bacon, Jacob Ford, Joe Kajic, Kimberly King, Kyle Torak, Nicole Besta, Pam Gabriel, Polly Egan, Will, Andrew Duffy, Andrew Ahmed Rubin, Billy Jean, Brad Allen Thompson, Gerald Lewis, Jay Poop, Calvin Thomas, Ken Yu Flybobby, Laurel Paul, Mel, Mitchell Kordick, Opus Moreshi, and Ryan Guggenmoss. I'm Brian Thompson, investigative journalist. <laughs>